We're going for the Sanguine Blade split pushing build today, and if that Rengar is trying to stop us, he's in for a nasty surprise. <laughs> Hello my fellow misfortunates and welcome to another episode of Unranked to Diamond, the series in which I show you that Elo Hell does not exist. We are sitting in gold 4 and against Alistar we can be super aggressive level 1, right? Because he is not a champion. You see, what's he gonna do? Walk up to us, press Q. I mean, we took a lot of damage there regardless, so it sucks a little bit. They're at level 2 in a second. Yeah, they pushed faster than we did. Let me just sit back here. Just a moment. Hide behind minions. Okay, so we didn't get all the farms. So yeah, Sanguine Blade first item, then Eclipse, then Edge of Night. And uh, especially with Sanguine Blade, we have so much pressure. In, uh, in, in side lanes. We can just push waves, take towers in seconds. Sanguine Blade is the best item for tower taking in the entire game. Because it has all the stats that work against towers, which are penetration, attack damage, and attack speed. And yeah, Lethality works against Taurus, so just stacking Lethality afterwards and naturally attack damage makes it even more deadly. Attack damage and Lethality are stats that are super good on Misfortune anyway. These minions are so awkward. I got that one either. Ooh, nice Morgana. Good job, Garen. Nice. Alright, looking good so far. But yeah, we just stack in Lethality afterwards. Uh, we will get the Zerilda's Grudge eventually, despite us having Percent Penetration and Eclipse. Uh, but the more the better, because Percent Penetration and Lethality have a positive synergy together. Percent is applied first and then the Lethality, so you get even more value. Because Lethality is more valuable, the less armor they have, which also means Lethality is more valuable the more Lethality you have. So yeah, the math checks out. <laughs> if you go lethal, well, you don't need to do the math. Obviously, you just need to know if you go if you go lethality to begin with, you should be going all in with lethality. The more you get, the more value each individual item gives you. And this is true. I did the math. Trust me. Just look up uh, lethality guide League of Legends, and then you will find my video. We can't leave the wave like this. Don't even care about getting farm here. I just want to get it under tower. Yeah, this is already fine. Oh, this is not fine. That's all in the ash. Yeah. Ah, we got baited, but yeah, you, you can't leave a wave like this. We need to either freeze it here and then base, or we need to shove it all the way under tower. The way we did it, it's now frozen, and uh, we can't do anything anymore. It's incredibly bad for us. Oh, well, Ash didn't get a single kill, so it's whatever at the same time. The, the wave is the real issue. This would have also happened had we just based. So yeah, we, we, I, th I think we needed to try. Turned out badly, but what can you do? We return with item advantage, by the way. We can definitely fight Ash's half HP. She took a lot of damage holding that wave. Rengar might be sitting here. I didn't burn my summoners, which was quite important. But Alistar got no flash. Yo, Ash, you want this? Sure. You want another one? Alright, Ash messed up big time. She will lose all the advantage she just had. Yep. That's exactly what happened. So now we unlock our overheal as well, thanks to Vamp Scepter. Which means we don't need to spend as much mana anymore if it's if we just need the movement speed. Because we will, the, the movement speed you get from W is um, permanent for as long as you're shielded. You can't lose it. Got a plating here. But yeah, that Ash played that so poorly. 
Rengar might be coming bot lane again. We need to be careful. I'll just hold the wave in the middle for a little bit. Well, if Morgana gets a stun here, okay. Just poke the Alistar down a little bit. We can hold for one more wave, after that we need to push all the way under tower. A lot of madness going on top lane. Here is Morgana maxing her W, that'd be bad. Okay, this is under tower. We know where Rengar is, so this is risk free. Nice. Yeah, as long as Alistar is low ish HP, they can't really do much. The tank support without HP is worth nothing. Lee Sin going for Gale Force, alright. You do you. That Morgana was so afraid of this Alistar jumping on me. I appreciate her efforts though, I mean. It's better than a Morgana not reacting to threats at all. Okay, now she gets a stun. We need to... Morgana, misfortune, is a nasty combo. Because now Morgana can black shield me too. Yeah, easy. She lands a stun, they are snared for years, and I can simply press R and they die. And Alistar can't stop me because Morgana can spell shield me. It's like the easiest bot lane combo to play, Morgana, misfortune. If you're in a duo queue or something. Can we dive him actually? Oh, had that landed, I would have gone. Well, actually, probably better that it didn't because Alistar can always ult and uh, then we probably kill him too late. We should base, I get my Sanguine Blade here. A Sanguine Blade might seem counterintuitive in lane, but it's actually super strong, because when it matters the most um, is when you force the enemy out of lane, and then you get the passive, which means you can push the wave instantly without spending mana and uh, take down tower platings extremely quickly. So, despite this being a 2v2 lane, also they won't be in the circle most of the time. It looks big, but it's actually smaller than it seems. And uh, they need to stay in that circle for like 3 seconds to deactivate the uh, Frenzy passive. So yeah, it's a super good item. Don't sleep on it. Especially when you have a rune page like this, where you don't have any form of mana regeneration. All the extra attack speed allows you to... Um, manipulate minion waves without spending, or without using your spells. Okay, we don't need to join there. This is already how much? 40% attack speed? 38, yeah. It's quite big. You see right now. You can keep track of the icon down there. Yeah, I can tank that. I'm exhausted. Oh, that hurts. Thanks. I should have just kept kiting while exhausted. Well, at the same time, exhaust means I don't get the kill regardless of what I do, I think. He's so dead. Or actually he escapes, alright. But there's no way he kills me through Sanguine Blade. This is the thing. Enemies want to gap close onto AD carries. Which means they don't have their team with them. Which means you get the Frenzy passive. It's so good. Okay, he has the cleanse effect. We should be careful. Mid lane's missing. But yeah, I can just farm with auto. So you see that the entire time Frenzy is active, there are three people in this lane, yet uh, they don't really interfere with my plans. If I get caught, I'm dead regardless, so it doesn't matter, I don't have Frenzy then. I guess they're out of lane. 
I risk it, I flash. You see how quickly I get that wave under tower now? Now I can help with Drake and then recall. Perfect. Yeah, Ash will miss a couple minions under tower. We um, get the wave to reset and slow push towards us. Uh, I'm pretty sure I should just reset here. Seems better overall. No, I won't buy a control ward. Um, we just took Dragon, which means a control ward is inherently less valuable. And uh, actually, we have lane priority. Maybe I should have still bought one and kept track of what's happening in River. Oh well, I'm not too afraid right now anyway. We should we can probably dual Rengar if he jumps on me with OT. Max and W obviously because we want more movement speed, more pushing power. Actually, I don't even want to follow there. I have Sanguine Blade. I can punish them so hard. Just pushing the wave and getting their tower. Yeah, they need to return. The wave's under tower instantly. They're not even close to being here. I can take a plating for free now. I need to be wary of Ash ulti, so I don't want to stay under tower too closely or for too long. But yeah, you saw the value we got. They roamed, they lost a wave, I got 160 gold from a plating on top. Super good value. It's so free. You see, Morgana even backshield me, so Alistar could do nothing. Now Ash out of lane, we can punish her with Sanguine Blade. This build was the was used by the rank 1 Misfortune player in Season 10. When mythic items were not yet a thing. And it was the best build by far. And even this season, it's still super good. You see, if, if, they, if they slip up once, they lose so much because of the split push potential. Tristana is getting fed top lane, who cares? I'm taking down their base. Crashing this into the second tower, and now uh, I can spend my gold. Should be easy. I really hope he isn't inting. Well, Noon Quiver is a good item, so whatever. Let's actually go like this. Are we needed top lane or is uh, any fine? She might be. Yeah. We'll just cover mid lane here. Losing mid lane tower sucks obviously, but nothing we can do. We can fast push and then roam top lane, maybe. I missed like all of these minions. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Oh, she has it, doesn't she? Yes, nice. I was heading towards the top lane just in case, but. Uh... I'll start flash. Okay, that was a little bit sloppy. The first one to admit this. But hey, lifesteal for the win. Not today, Lee Sin. Yeah, you can also farm jungle camps for as much as you want to. It's quite nice. You get so much CS. Which also means you get to your full build. In the late game, you just obliterate everyone with R. 
Or with auto attacks if they're foolish enough to try and 1v1. Dragon spawning, I guess they are contesting this now. Five seconds. I got my ulti, so we should be able to, uh, to win this. Tristana has teleport. Guys, please. One versus three. Got no chance here. Ah, I got separated from my team. That was a little bit sloppy, and Lee Sin failed a smite. Sucks. It's not the end of the world, though. We can still win through split push. Who started it? Um, the guy with the flamer name. Ah, oh, okay. The Lee Sin. <laughs> what else? Player name equals player intelligence, never forget this. This is a universal truth. Because who's coming up with a name? The player. In real life though, this equation becomes a uh, person's name equals parent's intelligence. And parent's intelligence is also to some degree person's intelligence, so... Yeah, names really do say, uh, say something about people, especially in online games, but also in the real world. Yeah, she's too far ahead. Level 12. I need, I need like three items, then I can duel her. Okay, so we end up trading one for one, actually, so this is not even too bad. This is actually a net positive for us, because uh, we get assists and she doesn't, or their team doesn't, so we get more gold. So this is like the standard build, and the last item is really a flex pick. Depends. I guess in this game... What do we want? Healing reduction? I'm not sure. Well, if in, in doubt, just go more lethality. Can't go wrong with that. We need more vision. We barely have any. On the map right now. Why is this so free? This is nasty. We do get good damage here. Fails to kill the Enevia though. However, she needs to base, which means we get mid tower at least. We take it so fast, which is Sanguine Blade. Look at this, it's dead in like 5 or 6 seconds. This Tristana is becoming a problem though. Uh. Need to keep her in check. Alright, we trade one for one with her, so that's a step in the right direction. Yeah, the extra health from Edge of Night will really help. We've got like how much life steal right now? Uh twenty-five percent plus Oh wait, <laughs> this is this is actually tough to calculate. No, nine percent plus yeah we got Oh god. <laughs> yeah, twenty-four point five plus nine. Uh, so 33.5% lifesteal. It's actually quite decent. 
But yeah, right now she's Sana, she's just so far ahead. It's getting closer though. We will be out dueling her very soon. Dragon in half a minute. Fifteen seconds. Hmm, that was bad. All right, so we lose the game off of this cleanly. They get at least two inhibitors plus dragon. I would assume. Well, it's not, it's not lost outright, but it's it's gonna be tough now. That was brutal, a brutal defeat. Annie failing her engage and getting killed. Nasty. Yeah, at least we have good wave clear, but they get Baron off of this. Botland inhibitor equals Baron. Always. There's no there's no way they don't take it. Because we need to attend bot lane, super minions, and that means they have more uh, they have numbers advantage at Baron and uh, we can't really challenge that. Not to mention they are nine kills ahead. Yeah, somebody needs to go bot lane very soon. Come on, Ranga, you want it. Overextended people are overextended, huh? Can't even help them there. I actually need to stop the Tristana finishing the game. They get Baron. No doubt. Yeah, we got no tower. This is the only tower we got left. So Baron actually doesn't do that much anymore. It's always, well, it still smothers us in minions. Oh my lord. What? With Morgana Q? That's crazy, man. It's not even lost. Can't approach stupid Anivia wall. Uh, we need to not fight here. Preserve Baron buff. Protect mid lane at all costs.
keep fighting boys. Had no attack speed there. All right. Dragon in 30. Preventing the soul would be nice, but it's nothing we can realistically hope for. Shut down. 20 seconds. Okay, actually, maybe we can take it. Tristana's dead. Still. So they won't take the soul right now. But I don't think we can prevent that long term. Stupid Tristana teleport. Got us real good. I guess that's game. Yikes, we're kind of on a cold streak right there. Yeah, Lee Sin is not even... Not even doing... Well, it can't do anything. It's just over. It's 20 seconds until I spawn. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Yikes, that team did nothing. <laughs> it's okay, though. Can't win them all. Uh, we are we still have crazy good MMR on this account, so it's only minus 6 LP. Who cares, really? Um, Split Push Misfortune does work. It's a good build. You can play it if you like the playstyle. Um, but if you want to see the best Misfortune build, click the link on your screen right there. A big thank you to all my Patreons and channel members. If you want to become a Patreon yourself, just go to patreon.com slash mfdb. But if you rather save your money, you can support me for free by clicking the like and the subscribe button.